American porter with extracts and an American wheat using a fresh work kit. Now if you haven't done extracts before and you've been doing kits so far, it's very easy. Um, instead of taking a can and adding a kilo of sugar, but basically making your recipe from scratch using the hops, uh, varying types of malts and your yeast. Boiling up the uh, malts with the hops, getting the bitterness that you like and the flavor that you like. The fresh worts are an all grain batch of beer, so we have a brewer that makes up the recipe for us. All you do is add the extra bits and pieces that you like. So in this case, we're adding some extra hops to a wheat drum. So this, this, is, this is going to be a wheat beer, but something along the lines of American wheat beer. So we've got American yeast and American hops. So not the German sorts of wheat beers, but more of a hoppy, fruity American wheat. Now at the moment we're bringing up uh, the grain, some specialty grain which we've steeped, and we're bringing that up to a boil. So this is the porter coming together now. So the grains we've steeped, in this case we've got a stout grain pack. That's going to give us some roasted notes and some chocolatey flavour. Now to that I'm going to add a little bit more water just so we have a good quantity uh, boiling on the stove. We just don't want to boil and burn everything so much. Go. So if you've got anything around a 10 litre size pot, you'll be able to do extracts no problem on the stove. What we're doing is just as the steeped grain wort, I guess you can call it, is coming to a boil, and I've got my extra water, I'll just dissolve a kilo of light dried malt. Now we want to boil our hops in some amount of malt, not the total amount because we can add that later in the fermenter. We just want enough to get a good amount of flavor out of those hops and bitterness as we boil it in this case for 40 minutes so make sure you stir this really well give it a good stir for a good while break up all those pumps right, for our wheat beer we've got pale, pale and bitter grain pack which is medium crystal malt so that's going to give you some caramel sweetness and so is your caramel grain pack but it's a little bit different so we're getting sweetness from both of these but it's just a little subtle difference to give complexity and sweetness, sweetness to give the wheat beer. So we've got that steep in here in this pot. Now you want to just really, once you've steeped that, add this liquid to your pot. And there's still some good stuff in that grain. So that's why we always say, get another liter or so and rinse that, rinse the grains with that. Let it, stir, let it soak and give it a good, a good squeeze. And we'll start bringing that to the boil as well. And we're going to add a little bit of the wort from the wheat drum to this just so that we have a big enough boil volume because you can have a very small amount of liquid while you're boiling the hops you're really left with a very thick, mucky mess. So we'll start opening this up and tipping about two litres back into this pot. So we'll have about five litres in both. On your toes, so we're gonna open up the wort and tip about two or so litres back into the pot, just so we have between four or five litres of, of uh, liquid boiling on the stove. <laughs> Pretty good to me, so we'll uh, put that back on the burner and just resume the boil. All right, now with your extract batch, you're going to need to make up about 23 litres. So, to do that, because you've got hot stuff here, you want some cold water on standby in the fridge. Now, I've got 15 litres here, cold, ready to go, but for your purposes, you can get just Coke bottles or any. any small jugs of water, put them in your fridge on brew day because you really want that yeast going into your batch at about 20 degrees. Now if you've got the wort for your wort recipe, you can just pop that in the fridge, get that cold beforehand so when you make everything up, 
you'll bang on 18 to 20 degrees and your yeast is going to be uh, much happier fermenting your batch. The liquid malts here too can get a little bit sticky when you're pouring them out of the tub. So I'd recommend putting it in some hot water, seeping it in there. So when it comes time to add that to your batch, you're not having to you know, hang over your fermenter, slowly pouring out your malt. So get some hot water and let it sit there for a little while, loosen it up a bit. So with our American Porter, we're using, just like the American wheat, we're using American hot varieties. This one, we've got pellets and flowers. Pellets and flowers will both work. Flowers, you just need to be mindful of. They're going to use up a bit more space um, in your boil. So if you've got something like a hop sock or a um, even the same bag that you use for your grain, rinse it out, put out all your hops into the bag, and make sure you leave enough space for them to swim around. Now we're going to put these hops in at certain times. We've got Centennial going in first, Cascade flowers going in second, and both of them, Centennial and Cascade, going in right at the end of the boil. Now I'll put these into this into this hot bag and just hang it over the side of the pot and let it sit in there. So we're just about on boil now and we'll add the water. Cool, so we've got both pots just about on the boil now. Now you might have noticed we have a lot more hops here than we have here. The reason for that is partly because the malts that we're using are, I guess what you'd call unhopped malts. Now compare this to a kit which is pre-hopped. Now our fresh work kit already has some bitterness to it, so we're adding a much smaller amount of hops really for flavour and aroma. But the centennial hops that we're adding for the porter is going to give us the bitterness that we need. So if you take your hops, we can put these back into our bag. I'm just going to tie it up like this, like so. Add them in. Now make sure you leave enough space the hops to expand. Now what I might just do is like this and leave it so your hops aren't quite touching the bottom of the pot because you don't want them to burn, you just want them to boil. go uh, citra hops, 20 gram citra, that's just going to boil for five minutes. So we're really just getting a bit of flavour from this. Alright, so we've done our boil for about five minutes for the American wheat. And we're just going to add, I guess, what we call a zero minute addition. Now, that might sound a little bit confusing, but the reason we have zero minute additions is that even when you stop boiling, you do still get some bitterness from the, oops, I guess, some bitterness and some and flavour just from the hops being in contact with that hot work. So we'll add this, let that sit and steep in this hot pot in a sink of cold water for about 10 minutes. Okay, so our golden wheat word has been sitting for about 10 minutes. Now we're going to take the hot bag out. Just let it strain a little bit for that good stuff out of it. You can squeeze all of it out, but I'm pretty happy with how much hops I've got in there at the moment. Throw that away. Now you're really trying to strike a balance at this stage of having your uh, total volume being around 20 degrees. So I'm going to add my wort. And we're looking at a 20 litre batch rather than a 23 litre batch for this. So we've added the, the wort drum and the boiled wort with the hops straight into the fermenter and we're just adding cold water now to get the temperature down to about 20 degrees.
you get a lot of oxygen in your hair, it'll help the work, it'll help the uh, yeast population grow and have a better time fermenting the beer. Make sure everything's sanitized. Where it goes into our fermentation fridge. Okay, we're coming off the last 10 minutes of the boil, we're just about ready to put our hop flowers in. Now this is the 10 minute edition, so we've been boiling this for bitterness uh, for about half an hour now. 10 minutes remaining at our second last dose of hops. And in this case, because we have so many hops in the boil, we're going to use Delta Flock or Whirl Flock, which is a kettle fining, so that's going to help clear up your beer. Because with lots of hops, you can get lots of haze. So we'll just take a tablet, just pop her in. It'll foam up, don't worry too much, that'll dissolve in with your brew. Now with the flowers, I'll just open that up. And like we did with the wheat beer, just slowly uh, add them back into our hot sock. Now again, you don't have to use this. If you've got a kitchen strainer, that'll work as well. Just, it's gonna save you a lot of headache at the end of the day. As we can see, these flowers have swollen up quite a bit. So that's why it's good to have a good amount of uh, volume to boil them in. Otherwise, you're not really making the most of the hops and the space that you've got. So we've got to the end of the boil now. The last 10 minutes are done. Let's turn the heat off and add our last Steeping addition. 15 grams of Centennial, 15 grams of Cascade, should give us a good whack of citrus flavor. Just need to not spill everything all over the place. Turn the boil off. I'll just tie this bag up, and at this stage, it's still getting flavor from those hops. Mix them through. And I've got my dark malts just heating up in the tub, and we'll just add them back in now with everything else. One kilo of light dried malt. So about four kilos of malt in total here. So we're aiming for something about five and a half percent. So a fairly strong American porter. If you want to get that extra last little bit out of the liquid malt, just put a bit of hot water in there, shake it about, tip the rest in. Now as I'm, stir as I'm stirring, the hops are steeping for about another 10 minutes. We'll take the hop bag out and add everything to the fermenter. Now we've got our 23 litres in total made up. So we've taken our wort, added back some cold water to it. So it's at a nice temperature now at about 20 degrees. Now I'm gonna add two packets of yeast to this batch because our starting gravity is gonna be hovering at around the 1055 to 1060 mark. And when it's that high, it's going to make it very hard for your yeast to get the job done using just one packet. Now some things you can do, which you may be familiar with, is hydrating your yeast. So that's to get the yeast in a small amount of water to wake up and get working.
and then add it to your brew. But what I'm doing in this case, just for peace of mind, I'm adding two packets of yeast. And that's going to ensure me that this does all the work and ferments the beer out perfectly. So, I'll leave those packets aside. Give the fermenter a good rock, rock back and forth. Get enough oxygen in there. Or, alternatively, you can stir it around very well with a sanitized spoon. Get your packet of yeast. And that's going to go in our fermentation fridge. And about four or five days later, we're going to add some Centennial and some Cascade back to our porter and some Citra and Mosaic to our American wheat. Now we call that dry hops. Now again, you can put them into your fermenter just as is, just loose, throw them straight in, or you can put them in your hop bag or your grain bag like we did during the boil. And we keep them there for another four or five days and we'll keg or bottle our beer.